HR Party of One is brought to you by Bernie Portal, the all-in-one HRIS that saves you time so you can foster a better place to work. Situations may arise where an employee needs to take medical leave from work, either for oneself or for an immediate family member. A federal law was created to provide for these individuals during this time, known as the Family and Medical Leave Act, or FMLA. In this HR FAQ, we're going to discuss what FMLA is, who is eligible for it, and some other factors, including how FMLA interacts with your PTO policy. Make sure to stick around to the end where I share how you can get the headache of managing FMLA off your plate at a very negotiable price. Let's dive in. What is FMLA? FMLA or Family and Medical Leave Act provides eligible employees up to 12 weeks of an unpaid job protective leave for family and medical purposes with the continuation of their group health insurance benefits. This act also ensures that employees are able to return to their job at the end of the FMLA leave. Under this act, the 12 week time period can be for any of the following reasons. The birth and care of a newborn child for an employee, the placement with the employee for a child for adoption or foster care, to care for an immediate family member with a serious health condition, and to take a medical leave when the employee is unable to work due to a serious health condition. Additionally, FMLA covers some military leave entitlements. For those eligible, employees may take up to 26 weeks of leave within a 12-month period to care for a covered service member with a serious injury or illness. FMLA applies to all public agencies in all public and private elementary and secondary schools, as well as businesses with 50 or more employees within a 75-mile radius. Who is eligible for FMLA? In order to be eligible for FMLA, an employee must work for a covered employer, have worked 1,250 hours over the 12-month time frame prior to leave, be employed at a business with more than 50 employees within a 75-mile radius, and have also worked for the employer for 12 months. These 12 months do not have to be consecutive for the employee to qualify. The caveat, though, is that the employment of 12 months must be within seven years, with the exception of an employee fulfilling military obligations, or if the break is governed by a collective bargaining agreement or other written agreement. Special rules apply to employees of local education agencies. For more information, you can visit the U.S. Department of Labor website in the description. How PTO interacts with FMLA. While the FMLA provides 12 weeks of unpaid leave, the law does permit that employer can require the employee to use all paid PTO time for some or all of the FMLA leave period. If the paid leave is used for an FMLA covered reason, then the leave is protected under FMLA. It is also important to note that the 1,250 hours that an employee is required to work over a 12 month time frame in order to be eligible for leave must include hours physically worked for the employer. Therefore, paid or unpaid time off does not count towards those hours. This is one reason why it's so important to have a system that accurately and automatically tracks PTO usage like Bernie Portal. If you manually need to track PTO in a spreadsheet or some other document, there is far more room for error when situations such as FMLA arise. Even worse, Error when it comes to FMLA can mean compliance issues, not to mention the amount of time it'll take away from the other high-level priorities. Does FMLA need to be used in consecutive weeks? In certain circumstances, it may be medically necessary for an employee to require taking leave intermittently. In these scenarios, an employee can take leave during separate blocks of time, or the employee may need a reduction in their typical weekly or daily work schedule. When the leave is due to taking care of a newborn or a newly placed adopted or foster child, the employer must approve intermittent leave and it must be taken within 12 months after the birth or placement. How does FMLA interact with short-term and long-term disability? Disability coverage pays you when you're unable to work due to any of the reasons covered by the disability policy. It is a very important coverage to consider offering employees and can be offered on an employer-paid basis or employee-paid basis. 
some states are beginning to require that the employer offer it or the employer has to pay into a state program. But in most states, it is simply up to the employer whether the employer wants to offer it. In contrast, FMLA is a federally protected form of leave. If you are a covered employer, you're required to offer it. FMLA and disability can interact because employees may use short-term disability and FMLA simultaneously. For example, an employee who has just had a child may use short-term disability benefits while on FMLA protected leave. It's not always the case that they are used simultaneously because disability coverage must be used for an employee's own illness or injury. An employee could not use short or long-term disability coverage to care for an ailing parent, for example. FMLA, on the other hand, can be taken to care for a family member or for personal illness and injury. How to eliminate managing FMLA from your plate. FMLA can be complex and it shouldn't be the responsibility of an HR party of one. Work with your broker to evaluate having your disability insurance company administer FMLA for you. Therefore, if an employee requests FMLA, you can direct them to the carrier who will be able to set that employee up properly and track their FMLA hours correctly. Unfortunately, not everyone who takes FMLA is being honest with their employer. A tongue-in-cheek nickname for FMLA is the Friday and Monday Leave Act, which is a reference to employees disproportionately taking Fridays and Mondays as FMLA. This is often an indication that an employee is abusing their FMLA rights. When FMLA abuse occurs, it's not uncommon for it to go to court where only meticulous notes and documentation can prove the abuse. This can become culturally and legally problematic for your organization. Outsourcing FMLA tracking to your insurance carrier eliminates extra stress and legal complexities from your plate. It also removes the responsibility of FMLA from your shoulders. You are still the one who approves it, but the rest of the process is now the direct responsibility of a company that has FMLA experts. They can do the work for you so that you can focus on more important tasks. That's it for this HRFAQ. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notifications about our newest episodes, which are released every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, thanks for watching.